So for a long time, I've wanted to be able to take things apart and look at them and try and fix them. I'm talking mainly printed circuit boards here. The problem with all of that is that a lot of the times when you're looking at circuit boards, they're pretty small and it can really strain your eye. And sometimes you really just can't see what you're looking at. And so when uh, a gentleman, I think it's a gentleman, by the name of Luca uh, came to me and said, hey, would you like to see my digital microscope and maybe make a review of it? So obviously, all full thanks disclosure, I didn't pay for this, but what I'm going to do is make an honest review of this product. Um, so this particular product um, is made by a company called Andon Star, and it's available from AliExpress. It's not a super expensive um, device, um, obviously. It's worth, uh, in New Zealand, $156 at the moment on sale, um, but usually ships for $333. So if you're buying in British pounds, it's about £150. If you're buying in America, then it's got to be somewhere in the middle of all of that, right? So it's, yeah, it's not a, not a super expensive thing. But um, sometimes the super expensive ones are just as good as the not super expensive ones. So I guess uh, we're going to find out just how good this is. Anyway, the um, device, I'm just looking at it here. It's called a Andon Star Hot Microscope AD208 device. It's an eight and a half inch display with adjustable LCD display and it helps you solder. Um, it's a fully digital microscope, um, black in color. It's got 1080p. And it's, uh, um, what else? It's got a 260 times magnification. So let's, let's see how this thing goes. So thank you very much to Andon Star for sending me this device. I do love what it says on the box. It says, digital magnifier, material aluminium alloy, use repair the circuit board. Um, <laughs> do enjoy that. Okay, so let's, let's get this thing open see what's in the box. Okay, so we have the display, it looks like here. Yeah, there we go. And on star display. There we go. Um, and on the back is what looks to be a torch. So you can see things really quite easily. A bunch of LEDs in there. And there are a number of controls on the front of the display. Okay, so we got that. To one side, and this is uh, well. It looks like it could be painful, <laughs> but it's um, it's a, a mechanical device for moving the I guess the torch back and forward. I'll see in a minute how that all works. Um, we got some screws. what you, looks like the uh, USB power switch. Uh, and there's also, I think, what is a brightness up and down uh, control there. So power, brightness, or something along those lines. I've never used this device, so I really know as much as you do about how this operates. Take that out. We have user guide of digital microscope. And the bottom plate, and that's it. And the bottom plate has not one, but two adjustable lights as well. So if I'm correct, that's three lights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble it. I would dare say that I need to use these screws uh, to assemble the thing. I'll have a look through the manual. I'll spare you the boredom of getting it all assembled. And now it's time for this guy. So with this bit folding down, we can put it in here. So I'll just back out these screws. You've got little plastic tips on them. 
think that's how it's supposed to go. Screw them in. And now we've kind of got a swivel point on the screen. And it says that here that the buttons on the display are power, um, mode or menu, up, down, OK, start recording video. This thing records video to a SD card, apparently. That's pretty cool. And also, um, number six is take photo. All right, cool. So, yeah, that's pretty, pretty nifty. Um, has a variable uh, light controller on the bottom here. All right. Now time for the USB stuff. It's quite a long cable actually. So this one's for the base light. And the base light connectors are these guys here. And apparently they plug in like so. And then there is a USB connector up the top. Like that. Okay. And this uh, USB is to plug in to the PC. Now if we look on the top side here, you can see there's an SD uh, card holder, like the micro SD. And on the bottom here, I'll just take this out for a second, I'll just show you. There is this here for a 18650 battery. I don't I don't actually know what a 18650 is. So presumably this whole thing can be operated from battery power. Looks larger than a double A. Let's just try a double A. Definitely not a double A battery. Um, I'm not quite sure what type of battery it is, but that one that's a double A and it it's a good fingers <laughs> size too short. So the next one up maybe? I'm not I'm not really sure what a 18650 is. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and uh, plug this into USB and see how it reacts. All right, so let's plug this thing in. So I'm plugging it into just a, a laptop actually. I found that I don't have any uh, USB with enough uh, juice on it, so this laptop's actually providing the power. All right, well, it said welcome, and it uh, it did actually do something. Um, you can see here, by putting my finger in front of it, it I get a different kind of <laughs> different kind of blur. So I'm just taking these lights away for a moment, just to see if I can um, do something. Um, the brightness of the display goes up and down, so that's um, that's controlling, you can't see the camera underneath, but when I turn this knob, the uh, the lights, or the LED lights on the camera go up and down. All right, so that part works. Um, I guess this is on. So what I have with me today is something that was donated to the channel by um, one of my colleagues, actually, um, Stephen Shepard. So thank you very much for donating this to the channel. Can you guess what it is? Um, it's a bit of a giveaway with uh, what it says on the packet, um, Hewlett Packard, if you can make that out. But I'm just going to take this out of its uh, lovely little sort of faux leather case. This device is from 1975. It's the Hewlett Packard 21 calculator. Beautiful calculator. Really, really nice retro feel to it. Lovely, chonky keys. But unfortunately, it doesn't work, of course. And um, I'm just going to stick this under the, the this display and see if I can get this to focus. So I'm turning, I'm adjusting the uh, focal button, uh, the focal uh, regulator on the actual camera itself. So you can see they're quite quite well going in and out of focus. That's just manually turning the focus adjuster. So there you can see the the uh, the color and the um, I don't know how well that's being picked up on the camera. Let's just bring these lights in as well. You can see the, the difference when I bring the lights in. So it's actually not too bad. Let's see what the, the display does here. What does that do to these 
Oh yes, it makes these uh, side lights brighter or less bright. Really hard to see that on camera, but you'll just have to take my word for it that it's um, make it. There you go. You can see them brightening or de-brightening as I change that control. So that's what those ones do. So I don't think I'm going to need much more light for this job, but let's just have a look at this. There's the battery compartment out. And let's just have a look at this thing. So I suspect the problem with this device, uh, this calculator, I should say, is the battery, is battery leakage. And there's definite signs of battery leakage that have happened over the years. So first things first, let's just put this under there. And you can clearly see the traces. That's pretty good going, actually. I don't think I'm going to need these um, little um, metal clips. <laughs> So if you wanna if you wanna use uh, if you wanna hold something up at an angle, that's I guess that's what these metal clips are, are for. Um, but I think they're probably just getting in the way, and I'm not sure how much I would use them. So I might even take them off. But you can see here um, if I move this along, it's a pretty clear display. Actually, not a problem. I'm looking at this from my camera. So if I turn this around, I'm getting a reasonably clear display. I feel like I could, um, it's, all, it's almost a bit blurry for me. Dream to the focus. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, that's pretty good focus now. I'll just turn that back around. I'm getting a very clear image of all the traces there on that board. Um, obviously, if I have a really large board, this um, is quite s short in in length, this, especially this metal board, the metal plate that I'm dealing with at the bottom. So if I was dealing with large uh, printed circuit boards or motherboards or something like that, then it might be a bit harder. Okay, so on to the rest of the calculator, and I'll see if I can just take this board out of the chassis. So yes, yeah, so my only complaint so far is that dealing with um, larger pieces, the, the adjustment arm is pretty much at the top there. So this is as far out as I can go. Um, you can see that uh, there's a lot, of, a lot more space that I could use. So you can see this um, heat sink here has sort of corrosion on the top. And that's probably caused by battery leakage of some description. But all in all, I would say that this board is in pretty good condition. So I'm going to have to figure out exactly what's, what's making it unhappy. If I flick it over, what I can do is I can look through every single trace on this display to help me analyse where it could be going wrong. So I would say that this is probably a win. And it will help me diagnose things just like this a lot easier than with the naked eye. And um, let's just see if we can zoom in a little bit with the manual adjustment arm. We're getting pretty close in now. <coughs> Still have further to go. I'm going to have to rotate the screen, unfortunately, because it'll hit off the, <laughs> the end. But there I am. Close to touching the board itself. Look, I'll just see if I can flip this around a little bit. Unfortunately, I won't be able to flip it around the whole way. But uh, <clears throat> let me just adjust the focus. Yeah, so I'm right down at the level of the board there. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I'll turn this, I'll turn this around as much as I can on camera. Wow, you can actually see. I don't know how easily you can see that, but the the resin on the board itself. That's pretty cool. You can see how clearly you can see that C3 there. And the good thing about this device here is that you can record all of this to a micro SD card uh, for playback on your PC or, or you know, you can take this and put it up on a YouTube channel or something like that as well, just like I will. So that's pretty, pretty decent. So yeah, I think I'm this is probably the way I'm going to diagnose any particular faults with PCBs from now on. This is a really good way to get really up close and personal with um, with a board because you know this is you know you can see any fractures along any traces 
at such a good level. I mean, this, as I said, goes right in there. I think it was 260 times uh, magnification, which is, you know, I don't think you really probably need much closer than that for any thing of, I mean, this, this vintage, obviously, this is 1975. Um, newer more modern digital boards, are, the, the traces are harder to see and so forth, but you, you can see on this, you can clearly see any issues with any of these traces. If there was a cut in any of these traces, you would certainly know about it. Or any dry solder, anything like that that needs to be refluxed and resoldered, you would be able to see it quite clearly on this. So that's a really good, um, good device. So I'm actually um, quite quite pleased about how this is this, this whole uh, device has actually turned out. So just to remind you again, um, thank you very much to uh, Andon Star. Uh, this is the hot microscope and the device is AD208 with an 8.5 inch adjustable LCD and um, a 1080p scope. So great for soldering, great for working at uh, just diagnosis of any issues and yeah um, check it out. At the moment, it's on sale on AliExpress. As I say, it's $156 New Zealand, um, and obviously whatever that is um, in, um, in your kind of currency, it's a pretty affordable device, and um, I think it pretty much does what it says on the tin. I don't really see any particular issues that I could have with, with this device. Really uh, pretty handy little thing. So um, look forward to a video soon where I'm uh, diagnosing possible issues with uh, this calculator. Looks like a really cool calculator, so I'll be quite pleased to get this one working. Thanks very much for watching.